Hello once again to the Level Design Hall of Fame. Uh, I got a fun one for you guys, if you can stomach watching this footage. Uh, PT! Playable Teaser. Uh, a game that does not deserve to be eradicated from gaming history. This is one of the greatest uh, horror games ever made. I think it's maybe the scariest game ever. And what's so interesting to me is how much can be done with so few items, I guess. Like, there's just not a lot going on in this game, but it is so fucking effective at what it does. And it doesn't have to use a big, giant world, doesn't have to use a map, doesn't have to use a ton of enemies, doesn't have to use a bunch of gameplay things, doesn't have to use a bunch of buttons. So simple, so precise, so directed, so effective. I, I don't think I'm ever going to put up another game into the Level Design Hall of Fame that is so minimalistic. It's literally an L-shaped hallway. And like, one extra room. A bathroom. That's it. That's the whole fucking game. One hallway, and a bathroom. Just one hallway, turn the corner, boom, another hallway. That's it. But that's all you need. Uh, I guess it's not exactly like what the game has, but how it uses it. This fucking hallway is so goddamn frightening. Turning that corner every time, and there's always something different every time you turn the corner, is so fascinating to me. That is so smart to just give somebody a repetitive just over and over again. It's the same level. But every time you go through that door and it puts you right back at the start, something is different. And it's either up to you to notice it, or sometimes it's obvious uh, you to just react to it. Nothing you can do. There's no combat. There's uh, You can't do it. You're, you're just walking and you're just looking. And the paintings and all the little things in the house which make it feel like a real home. The, the pictures, the radio, the clock, uh, the doors, the like everything is so carefully placed because everything is sort of used. Sort of like, uh, you know, Native Americans. Every part of the animal they kill is used. Everything is played with at one point. Everything has a purpose. Everything tells a story. It adds to the world. It, it reveals a lot about the characters that you're learning about. Even if it's not direct. It doesn't, you know, obviously it doesn't have to have on the wall scrolled, like, I killed my family or whatever. But, like, just, like, what they were into and what kind of people they were when they turned... And, oh, pop-up scare coming up. Warning, trigger warning. It's a pop-up scare. Where is it? Somewhere here. Boy, I know it's in this bathroom. There you go. Um, and, uh, and it's just every single time you turn that corner, there was another moment. And it just uses the hallway to, to such a fucking brilliant degree. Like, you're never quite sure what's going to happen. And it almost seems like every little cutout like of the hallway, like the little room with the clock, and there's just, like little moments of reprieve. There's just little spaces to like hide in and, and, and creep along. And, and you, you know, you got, oh, is that a woman down that hallway? What's going to happen? Or, oh, is that a hole in the bathroom? Like, I wonder what's through there. Uh, why is this mirror all scratched up? I can't see my own reflection. I can't see what's behind me. Um... I fucking love this game, obviously. I think this is this is brilliant. Um, and it's so sad that Konami pulled it. Um, but yeah, but I guess this sort of speaks to the nature of the Level Design Hall of Fame is, is, is what exactly uh, sort of gets you in. Is it just really good level design? Is it really just you being able to construct an environment or, or a world or an arena or something that is just so smart and really gives the players good freedom, or gives the players a bunch of really great options, or it has a bunch of really cool shortcuts and and secrets. Is it is a particular is it a mission um, that's just that's really well thought out? Um, you know, like like what what constitutes a level being sort of inducted? And I think is an interesting question because I'm not quite sure myself. Um, I mean. There's another video that's going to come up in a couple of days um, that, that also sort of speaks to it. It's like, I guess it's it's how the gameplay and the level interact. It's how that's connected, I guess, it, for me, is is what makes it special. 
Um, Because, again, I mean, there's nothing particularly innovative about a a hallway, but it's, you know, in other games, if it's just a part of a house, you don't really think about it. But but when you really break it down and you just, you you say, why why bother having the house? Let's just only have the hallway. We only need the hallway. We don't need anything else. Um, As long as we make sure that they don't go through a certain door, like the front door, you can never go out the front door. It's just there. But it doesn't stop people from trying to, you know, knock on the other side just to scare the shit out of you. To make you seem like it, you can never escape. To remind you of, of the fact that it's, it's this just redundant nightmare of, of constantly just going back through the hallway. And it's even great is that, like, in the game, there are moments where you, you, uh, you, you find, like, scratches on the wall indicating how many times the person, like, another person has gone through the hallway. Have you been going through this hallway the whole time? Like, you know, like, it, it keeps, like insinuating that like this hallway is hell and or purgatory or something and you and you keep going through it in this infinite thing ad nauseum um you know where this this place where where this man murdered his wife and and him the baby and she was pregnant and it just keeps reminding you of all these like all these moments of this got the baby and it's got uh the refrigerator this bloody refrigerator that he like put their bodies in or whatever um, spoilers for this game that no longer exists. You can't play it. You have to watch footage of it. Um, it is just so cool that they are able to utilize so little space and and not that many like art assets. There's not that many like interactive sort of bits to it. But everything is just so well sort of designed and laid out. Like all the little hints to like what you're supposed to be doing next. Like there's a part where there's like this this painting of the couple and there's like a blue X over her face. And the game doesn't tell you what buttons to press, but that looks like the X on the controller. So instinctually, you sort of go up like, can I hit the X button on her face? And then boom, you gouge your eyes out, and then that's like a puzzle. Um, so all the puzzles are like very, very well placed. And again, it's all just everything's placed correctly in the level, exactly where they want you to go and what you what they want you to see. So everything has a sort of purpose towards place. You know, like the bananas are there, and then they start rotting as you go deeper and deeper into it. Um, you know, and I guess that, that sort of brings up the question, like, like, how much credit do we give the developers? Like, is there one team who just sort of does just all the art, and is there another team who sort of, like, says, like, okay, well, here's where every item is going to go, and, and how are we going to use those items? Like, how sort of deep do you want to go with, like, giving who credit? I don't care. I'm going to give Kojima and his staff all the credit. But to me, all of that counts as being the level. All of that counts as... as why this deserves to be in the Level Design Hall of Fame is just how well the game uses the level of oh, pop-up scare, sorry. Um, and so there's another video I, I, I did I'm going to redo, or I guess re-upload, which is Gone Home, which has the same sort of question. Like, the house itself is not, you know, that ingenious. It's just a house, but it's how they work you through that house and how everything is laid out and what's there and where you're going and how the puzzle sort of inter... Like, since these games are so boiled down to one central idea, um, I guess it really sort of maximizes uh, the levels in a way. So if if they were shitty, you would fucking notice. It wouldn't work. But since they are so good at doing everything in, in this, I guess it's a demo of what Silent Hills was supposed to be, uh, you know, it just it just makes everything stand out. Um, and so that's why I'm inducting it. And so I would highly recommend that you watch somebody play through this or just watch the rest of this footage without commentary. It's really up to you. I think this game is phenomenal. It is an all-timer. It is something that you would teach people on on how to make a horror game just straight up. It's just one of my favorite things ever. Um, so there you go. So I guess I'll end with this bag talking to you. Uh, thanks, talking bag. Uh, with bloody parts in it. Um, you can follow me on Twitter at, at Jared Russo. I'm going to keep uh, posting new uh, episodes of this series and either re-uploading or redoing older episodes. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching, and I hope you have not been totally spooked by this episode. Um, but you know what? I couldn't find background music. I usually like to put music up behind these. It's very difficult. I said, fuck it. I'll just should give you the real audio. So there you go. Oh, by the way, some there's a person uh, up on that second floor looking down on you. If you can track them, that's a really great bit. That, that's scary. Some people miss that. So, there you go. PT. It's awesome. Fuck you, Konami.